Yes, for five minutes. Well, Mr. Speaker, the amount of sacrifice given to this nation by those serving in our armed forces is truly inspiring. American men and women in uniform are a remarkable symbol for our country, and we are truly proud of their dedication. The Minnesota National Guard's 34th Infantry Division, known as the Red Bulls, have served our state and our country with honor and are truly the best our nation has to offer. Their dedication to ensure freedom has been a momentous task, and they continue to succeed with utmost bravery. This responsibility is no small task. Indeed, ensuring democracy in a fragile state is something that takes courage and trust. Now, most recently, more than 1,000 members of the Red Bulls were deployed to Basra, Iraq, where they took command of 14,000 troops in nine of 18 of Iraq's provinces. After serving long hours and giving up days and years of their lives, the Red Bulls have finally returned home to Minnesota. And it was a joyous occasion. Families and friends reunited after serving our country and representing our state. These heroes took part in the Minnesota National Guard's Beyond Return to the Yellow Ribbon Reintegration Program, which helped soldiers ease back into everyday life. And to give thanks for their extended service, in January 2007, the Post-Deployment Mobilization Respite Absence Program, PDMRA, was implemented to offer extra pay to those who served extended time overseas during deployments in Iraq and Afghanistan. But despite this promise, more than 23,000 troops did not receive the benefits they were promised due to the bureaucracy and the red tape within the Department of Defense. Troops that were owed thousands of dollars, they didn't see a dime. This was entirely unacceptable. This was a type of delay, whatever the excuse, was certainly outrageous. And though this was not a new issue, I was proud to work on this issue as soon as I arrived in Congress. In fact, the effort was led by the Minnesota National Guard, Representatives John Klein and Tim Walls from Minnesota, along with the rest of the Minnesota delegation, and Representative Bruce Braley from Iowa, whose tireless work on this issue should not go unnoticed. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to our veterans' issues, partisan politics are not an option. We all share a common goal in Congress to support our troops and have worked together to ensure that those that serve our nation get the respect and the recognition that they deserve. And while we authored legislation that would have provided an immediate fix for this issue, a major hurdle we faced was that many members of Congress did not know the problem ever existed. Despite the fact that 19 states had 500 or more constituents who had not received money, many members were unfortunately aware, uh, which was a major hurdle in passing this legislation. And so we made it our mission personally to educate members of Congress about the problem, and we tried to raise awareness about the issue. We also sent numerous letters to the Defense Appropriations Authorization Committees so that we could begin to address the problem in Congress. And while thousands, in the meantime, continue to wait for the DOD to act. And in the House, we were successful in getting language in the Defense Authorization Bill, and we got money allocated in the Defense Appropriations Bill. And then, unfortunately, the Senate Authorization Bill had language to fix the problem, but their Appropriations Bill did not include the funding. So sadly, after all of our efforts, the final Defense Appropriations Bill that the President signed into law did not contain the funding that was needed to provide the fix to this problem for our troops. But we kept on fight fighting. We did not give up, and the issue was raised in a question by Representative Klein to the Defense Secretary Gates during a House Armed Services Committee hearing recently, and it was just shortly after that that the Department of Defense announced that it was changing its policy and that they would end these burdensome regulations in order for the soldiers to get the money that they were promised a long time ago. So I'm proud to report that now the first checks have been mailed out to our deserving troops. The Red Bulls, without a doubt, deserve every dollar they will be receiving after this three-year wait. And I want to take this opportunity to thank them again for their service and pledge to them that we will fight to make sure that a similar situation never happens again in the future. I yield back the balance of my time.